In this video, I'm gonna share with you how my video game addiction as a teenager almost ruined my life and how I use those experiences to later find success in both academics, being a salesperson, and eventually an entrepreneur. Now, the first gaming experience that I had was actually when my uncle got me the Game Boy Pocket. I remember this one didn't even have a color screen. It was black and white. Um, it was by Nintendo, right? You put a little cartridge in, you start playing little video games, right? And I graduated into a Nintendo 64, PlayStation, uh, GameCube, uh, Xbox, and eventually I got into PC games, right? Computer games. Now, during most of the years, you know, I was more like a casual gamer, just like everybody else was, right? You play on the weekends and you do your schoolwork during the weekdays, things like that. But when I started getting into PC games, this is when things started to really get out of hand, especially when I got introduced to this game called Dota. Now, it was back in high school my, when my friend showed me this, and essentially, if you don't know what Dota is, it's, uh, it's one of the original MOBA games, multiplayer online battle arenas. And basically that, what that is, is it's a five on five where you know five people on each team you know fight each other and one side's gonna win, right? So if you think about games like League of Legends, right? League of Legends is based on Dota, right? So it's a similar format. Now we don't have to get into the super technical details of what this game is about, but essentially you gotta understand that it's basically like a five versus five chess match, right? There's so many different moves and variables and things that can happen and it's a very deep, deep game. So it's one of those games where you can keep playing for hours and hours and hours, and you always feel like you're learning something new. There's always a level to go higher, and I would take this game super seriously, right? So at first, you know, I play here and there with my friends, a couple hours, whatever, and then I just started playing more and more and more. First, it was on the weekends, and then I started playing a couple days during the weekday, and then eventually I found myself spending hours every single day, even on a school day, playing this game. And I remember I would just, neglect my homework in a way, like I would just kind of do it for like 30 minutes or maybe 45 minutes and then just like, you know, it's good enough, whatever, close the books and then just turn on the game and start playing, right? And my parents at the time, they didn't really say too much about that, but they were probably thinking like, why is this guy playing video games every day? That's kind of strange. And so when this happens, you basically, it sucks your life, right? Like you don't care about academics, you don't care about, let's say, dating. Uh, you don't really think, oh, for me, I wasn't really thinking about the future. All I wanted to do was play this game and get better at it, beat my friends, and just keep progressing and progressing and progressing. And it's kind of a weird thing because it's like, you feel like you're, I mean, it's like a constant dopamine hit, right? Because you're playing a game, it's fun, it sucks you in, that's how it's designed to keep you to keep on playing. Not only that, but as you're learning new skills and you're getting better, you feel this sense of accomplishment like you are doing something with your life, right? So if it gives you that dopamine short-term reward, and then it gives you also that long-term reward of knowing that you're getting better at something, then it's very, for me, it was very difficult to, you know, break out of this. And I got so deep into it that I would, you know, not only play the game, but I would go online, read strategy guides, I would download, um, you know, recordings of professional players playing this game and and watch it and study it to learn how you know what they're doing and you know how to improve my game so when i play against my friends i totally crush them because um you know it's a whole different skill level right and so i would literally spend hours studying the game and i would play hours or play for hours as well and as a result grades were not doing as good as they could have been i wasn't exercising anymore uh, I was really skinny and frail and I feel like I wasn't really communicating with my parents at all and it's just like, you know, all these things, it, it, I kind of like, it kind of sucked my entire life into just playing this game and that's pretty much all I cared about, that's pretty much all I knew and I was only thinking about that during school as well. Now that's the dark side of gaming, but you know, there's always going to be two sides of a coin. You know, see the thing is, I didn't know it at the time, but because I was so passionate and so obsessed over a specific subject like this game, um, it actually taught me a lot of things, right? Because when I was going on these websites and blogs and downloading replays of professionals and analyzing it, you gotta understand that I'm learning a craft, right? I'm basically reverse engineering what professionals do and I'm trying to apply it to myself. And, you know, because I have this obsession and passion, I remember there were people at my school that I played with, they, I remember they made fun of me. They were like, oh, Patrick, you know, study this game like he's an academic in Dota or something like that. And they were, they were right, you know? Um, I wouldn't say it was right to mock me for it, but they were right in that I was really taking it very seriously, almost like I would um, people would take their academics seriously. And you gotta understand that this is before Twitch, right? So, you know, watching other people play video games wasn't really a thing quite yet. And so I was doing that, trying to get better at this game because, you know, that was the best way I found to get better. So in a sense, even though it is a video game, 
learning this craft, learning the skill, learning how to do research online and finding different ways to become better at something um, that's not so obvious, that actually is very entrepreneurial in a sense because what does an entrepreneur do, right? They see an opportunity, they wanna be better than everybody else, they study the competition and then they do the work to actually build a business. Well, I was kinda doing that process but I was actually just doing for a video game and trying to get better at a skill. So I was super deep into this, maybe 16, 17 years old. And then what changed everything was that, um, well, first of all, uh, Dota became less and less relevant and then the new games were coming out, right? And these new games, obviously they're gonna be the next generation games, so they required more graphic power, more uh, computing power to actually play. And at the time, I was playing on an old laptop, uh, four years old already, and then my dad basically just gave it to me to use for school and stuff like that and it wasn't built for gaming. So even when I was playing Dota, it was so slow and laggy a lot of the times, maybe like 30 frames per second, I was still playing this game. And then when the new games came out, they required so much uh, graphics power compared to the old one that you know my computer just couldn't keep up. So I would try to play with my friends, it would be just so bad, so laggy, maybe like 10 frames per second, 15 frames per second. And then basically I just gave up trying to play because I didn't have money, so I'm not gonna buy a new computer. And then, it's a terrible experience. So all my friends kind of moved on to the next thing. And I kind of just said, you know what? I want to make a change in my life. I don't want to be this gamer kind of person anymore. And so I kind of just leaned out of it. And so as I, you know, started to rethink about my life and, you know, started thinking about like what I want to do and I got more interested in business, I started realizing that you know, learning how to play this game and taking it very seriously was the exact same skill that I needed to become better in academics, right? Like I said before, all you're really doing in academics is you're just kind of researching what people have already done, researching raw material, understanding what you want to do, reverse engineering it to see how someone got a certain goal. And then from there, you just break it down step by step so that you can do it yourself and you can achieve the goal that other people achieved, right? Because I learned that process from gaming. When I started getting serious about academics, I was like, well, wait, this is the exact same thing, right? I'm already professional at this. So basically I applied that knowledge, applied it to academics, and then just from there, so about 17 years old and onward, my academics just shot up just just like that, right? I went from being just like a B minus student, C plus student, to becoming like an A student. And that, in my opinion, is a quite a big jump. And so basically I turned that gaming obsession, applied it to academics, did pretty well in academics where I graduated from USC with honors. And from there, I applied the same skill set and knowledge into sales. Because you gotta understand that video games is very similar to academics. Academics is very similar to sales in terms of learning a new skill, right? Because sales, what, what is that? It's just understanding human beings, how they work and what motivates them, seeing what the professionals do, people who have more experience than you, reverse engineering it, understand all the fundamentals, and then applying it to yourself so that you could start walking the path and do the same thing. Gaming, exact same thing. Academics, exact same thing. So when I got into sales, I already been training my brain for this for years without really knowing it and then it just became so natural for me because um, of the process, right? I wouldn't say I was a natural uh, communicator or natural of people because I was like this, you know, really introverted gaming person before that, you know, didn't really have much friends and wasn't able to communicate that well. And, but I learned how to learn and that allowed me to learn how to do communication skills and learn how to sell. And eventually I just trained myself to do it. And now as I, you know, start to run my own business and I start hiring people and things like that, I've realized it's the exact same process. Learning video games, you know, when I was a teenager, learning that process of diving deep into something and being passionate directly applies through all areas of my professional career. And now, even still, I'm still using the same process as an entrepreneur and business person. I'm reverse engineering. I'm seeing what other people are doing. How do they do it? What are the fundamentals? How do I do it myself? And that is pretty much the game. And so my message for anybody who is, let's say, maybe addicted to video games, or maybe they play a lot of video games, but they don't know they're addicted and they don't realize how much it's affecting their life. Well, this message is for you. I think the first thing is when you are addicted to something, sometimes you don't know you're addicted because it's hard to admit that, right? Nobody wants to admit that when they play six hours of video games a day, they don't want to say they're addicted. It's like saying, you know, someone's uh, addicted to smoking, but they, they're like, oh no, I can quit anytime. And then they just keep smoking and smoking and they never quit. So I think the first step of, you know, fighting addiction for me, at least when it comes to video games is just admitting, like understanding like, yes, maybe you are addicted but when you recognize the problem, you can start doing things to fix it. 
And also, if you find that you're pretty good at video games, you have to understand that there are a lot of jobs out there that are very high paying that are less difficult than being really good at a game, right? Like games like League of Legends, Dota 2, uh, Overwatch, Fortnite, PUBG, you know, name it, whatever it is, right? To actually be like super good at these games, like let's say uh, top 5% in the world, it's actually very difficult to do because you have to learn the mechanics and you have to learn like the strategy on how to actually become good. I found that if you're able to get like, let's say top 10%, top 5% in the world, a lot of other jobs that you can pay, get paid a lot of money for are actually much easier to do than being that good at a video game. The only difference is that a video game gives you the short-term dopamine to feel like you can keep going and going and going and play forever, and also gives you that long-term feeling of growth where you're getting better at a game, right? Whereas, let's say a job may not give you that short-term dopamine in the beginning, because sometimes it is a grind a little bit, maybe there's a learning curve and you don't get rewarded right away. But you know, there definitely is the long term of when you're doing really well in your career, you're making a lot of money and you're doing great, right? So I would say that if you are good at games or you're obsessed about it, you don't even have to be that good, but you have a passion for it and you're doing it, know that you can apply the same mindset into other fields that aren't necessarily related to gaming, especially in your professional career, because everything is kind of in gaming life, right? It's just how you see it. The other thing is, if you're so passionate about gaming, I would also recommend trying to find a career where you can, you know, work with games, whether it's being a designer, a marketer, a business person, um, you know, working on operations, right? Gaming is so big now, it's a huge multi-billion dollar industry that there are gonna be more and more jobs created. So now there's gonna be more and more opportunities for people who are interested in gaming to actually work in games and you know help create the games that they love to play. And so that's pretty much my story of how I turn my gaming addiction into something positive. Hopefully, if you're watching this and you might be, you know, maybe playing a little bit too much games, that you take some inspiration from this, turn things around, and do whatever it is that you want to do in your life. So, if you made it to the end of this video, you know, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe, turn on notifications if you want to see more videos like this, and let me know in the comments, you know, is video game addiction something you're struggling with? And, you know, if you overcame it, how did you actually do it? Because I'm curious to know. So with that said, my name is Patrick Dang, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one.